Hello, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel. In this video, we'll do numerical examples for the link budget analysis or for the link budget. The link budget is a process of finding the power requirement for a wireless communication system. So we'll take uh, three examples. The outline for the presentation, we'll have three examples. We'll start with satellite link. We'll go into generic digital broadcasting satellite TV and then we'll consider the wireless small cell example that would be a simplified example finally we will motivate what comes next which is the combined multi bath and shadowing scenario so these are simple examples and then we need to consider multi bath and shadowing in coming videos the first example states that for a satellite link which is at 40,000 kilometers, the satellite transmit 2 watts, and the antenna gain is 17 dB global beam. So we want to find the flux density on the Earth's surface. Remember that the flux density equal to the ERB, or the transmitted power, times the antenna gain, and then we divide by the impact of path loss. And then we look at the power received by the antenna with the effective aperture of 10 meters squared. Once we find the flux density, we can find the received power by multiplying by the area. Gain of the receiving antenna. And then we want to know um, the received carrier to noise ratio, assuming um, the following noise temperature and the bandwidth of the system to be 500 megahertz. So let's take it one at a time. For the flux density, you need to know that you have to divide the ERB or PT times GT divide by 4 by R squared. R is the distance here, which is 40,000 kilometer. And we know PT and we know, we know GT, so we just go ahead and uh, substitute in the numbers. That is um, 2 watts. And then we have gain of the antenna. If you convert 17, uh, it becomes 50. Remember that 20 dB is 100. So minus 3 dB, 3 dB becomes 17, which is half of the 100, which is 50. Fantastic. Now, if you look at the distance, it's 40,000. Because of the kilometers, then we convert into meters. So it becomes 10 raised to the power 7. And then we have squared. That's a really very small flux because of the distance. If you convert that into dB by, take, by taking 10 log, you get the following uh, solution, the following answer. Please try to do it yourself because we could have some numerical mistakes. Now, for the gain of, of, um, of the antenna, if you want to solve the same problem in dB, you can find that uh, you need to convert the ERP using dB scale, so it becomes 70 dB, and then the power transmitted 2, which becomes 3 3 dB, that's 20 dB. You can convert the distance also in, into um, log scale, that's meter squared, and you can convert the 4 by if you like, it becomes 11 dB. And then you just substitute the numbers, the numerator minus the denominator, and we got uh, our final answer, of course, to be the same, because we are whether you do it in linear scale or dB scale, you should get the same answer. Now let's look at the power received. Let's take this number and move to the next slide. For the power received, by um, you multiply the flux by the area, so we know it's 10 meters squared. If you if you do the multiplication, it becomes minus 33 dB watt, dB watts. Uh, if you want to solve the same question, of course, I'm just showing it for as a duplicate. You can do things in dB to start with. And of course, you should expect to get the same answers. For the gain of the antenna, remember that we are given the area and we are given the frequency. So remember that for this kind of reflector, I'm not expecting you to memorize the formula, but if you, if, if you know that there is a relation between the gain and the area, then we can find the gain of the receiving antenna to be 4 by times 10, which is the effective area. Of course, we're assuming that uh, the entire area is efficient. So we have lambda squared 
and then we have 0 0.0273 which is coming from the frequency which is 52.3 dB the fourth part is to find the noise temperature for the system because we want to find the carrier to noise ratio everything is just about received power the noise temperature the noise power equal to k times ts times b b is the bandwidth given in the question to be 500 meg and ts is Boltzmann constant and then we have uh, the given so we given the, the given temperature for the system again you can do things in db scale and of course you should get the same thing now we know that the carrier we have found for the case of received power if you want the carrier to noise ratio then in db scale this would be one equivalent to subtraction this is not equal sign this is rather than equivalent and then we just subtract and we get minus 13.2 db so we have very um, i mean the carrier relative to the noise is having a small value so the system might not be the best thing you want to do the second example is about a power budget example for the generic di digital broadcasting satellite tv and the parameters given for the satellite tv uh, is that the transponder the transponder output power is 160 watt antenna beam on uh, uh, on axis gain is 34.3 db path loss at 12 gigahertz we calculated that to be uh, minus 205.7 uh, db receiving antenna gain and edge of beam because uh, we assume that uh, there is a loss if you are not let's say that we have a beam and the beam will cover a certain area of the earth we just try to do this here so this is the coverage on earth so if you are at the center you get the highest bore site gain but if you are at the edge there will be some loss and this is what we mean by edge of beam loss other losses miscellaneous losses is minus 0.8 this is given by the system and now if you combine the losses with the gains you'll find that you get the received power to be minus 119.7 db watts this these are kind of uh, real numbers for the case of the digital uh, broadcasting satellite for the case of noise uh, we will do the same we have k the temperature and we have the Boltzmann constant and we know the bandwidth so multiplying them uh, in, in linear scale or adding them in log, log scale will result in minus 134 so that's relatively good because the noise is much less than uh, the signal level so if you want the carrier to noise ratio will be the difference between these two which is approximately 14.3 db so um, uh, if, if the margin for the system to operate is 8.6 db we have a margin we have extra than the minimum requirement we call it the margin of 5.7 if you add 5.7 plus 8.6 you get 14.3 um, and um, this is just to get to, to let you know that for this example uh, the link availability is, is relatively high which means it's about 99.7 percent of it. you cannot get this number directly from here but this is just kind of given to complete the picture all right uh, for the third example we assume that we have a wireless kind of mobile system with a small cell so we'll be using we're making very simple assumptions to start with and then we will complicate things as we go on the course so for an outdoor small cell we are given the following parameters where we have uh, consider an outdoor small cell with a frequency of 2.5 gigahertz cell of radius 10 meter and isotropic antenna uh, under the free space path loss model so this is an assumption it's not usually the case for mobile systems but we're just making things simple so we'll make free space model which means we can use the same equation we had before later on we'll we'll add to these equations and we'll change the exponent here what uh, what transmit power is required what is PT that's required uh, at the base station in order to for all terminals within the cell to receive a minimum power of 0.1 so we are given an area and it's 10 meters the radius is 10 meters given here and we want to make sure that people at the edge okay will receive at least 0.1 microwatt how does this change in if the system frequency is 5 gigahertz so we have just one main equation to to play with which is the following equation so uh, we'll solve for p pt 
it's equal to PR and then um, well uh, this is exactly the same equation you can see that we are solving for PT it becomes PR we divide I just got GTGR inside the bracket so it becomes a square root square root with the square the, we, we just have the same equation now everything is known we know uh, PR the transmitted power which is uh, I mean the received power we want it to be a minimum of um, just change the color here uh, 0.1 watt so this guy goes here and then we have the distance at the edge right and we have also the gain of the antenna so what's the gain of the antenna it's embedded here it's one because we have isotropic radiator lambda we can get this from f we know that c equal to lambda f so c equals to lambda f lambda times f that's a fundamental equation so now we substitute everything is given as I mentioned gt equal to gr equal to 1 lambda will be 0.12 meters and then we have um, d equal to 10 meters and pr equal to 0.1 substituting the numbers we got that the required transmitted power is 0 0.1 uh, 097 watts or if you like uh, it's going to be 109 milliwatts or 110 milliwatts approximately then the question says how does this would how would this change if we double if we take the frequency to 5 gigahertz this means that lambda is now going to become half which means with the square we have a factor of 4 so uh, the required power if you increase the frequency will have to be scaled by approximately four times or four times exactly so uh, changing the frequency to higher frequency means we need to have more power pumped into the transmit antenna this give a good idea about the impact of which band we operate with and working at millimeter wave and high frequency as we're going to see in the course remember that we're making things simple here and we're going to complicate things as we go so doubling the carrier frequency leads to a requirement of four times more transmit power illustrating the power consumption challenge in moving wireless system to high frequency spectral bands fantastic now uh, before I, I i conclude this uh, i would like to share with you that uh, in wireless mobile systems there will be not just path loss there will be path loss shadowing multipath. what are these we will we'll explain them in coming uh, videos shadowing means blockage multipath, reflection scattering diffraction so I'm using this slide just to excite you to be with us in the coming videos and enjoy the learning process as we go on so we'll, we'll explain these curves we'll explain shadowing and multipath. the received power is not just the transmitted power with path loss we'll add the red and the green terms both of them are something we have to worry about so we'll see you then in coming videos thank you for being good listeners and watch for the coming video